welcome to the Naked and Afraid Show with the one and only Oye Consola Alabi. Thank you for hanging out with me. It's the Emotions Doctor once again. Today we have something interesting to talk about. And if you know me so well, I have an agenda against this particular topic. Anytime I see, I taste, I smell, or perceive this topic, you will see me there. Like anytime I hear that name or that word, you are going to see my pretty soul and pretty face there. I have an agenda and I've done a tour. I'm still doing a tour around it. And what exactly am I talking about? It's called how to strip off shame. Oh, that word shame. I have an agenda against the word shame. I have an agenda against shame because once you can understand the concept of shame, <laughs> you become more powerful. I am telling you, you become more powerful. You are going to dwell in the secret place. You are going to dwell on another level. Like that's when you would understand that you are a body that has a spirit. Do you understand? You would understand how unique you are and your power. Every conversation with you will become an encounter. So I have an agenda against shame and everything that revolves around shame. What is the etymology of the word shame? Etymology means the root meaning of a word. What is it? The word developed from Old English, which means scammer. It is also from the Germanic word, which only means a feeling of guilt or disgrace. The Webster Dictionary also calls it a powerful emotion cursed by consciousness of guilt, shortcoming, and impropriety. Yeah, impropriety. And every time I look around, daily, 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 every time I look around, there's so much shame, especially reserved for women. Before you blow off, just hold on. Sometimes women are being shamed for being single, shamed for not getting married early, shamed for getting married early. Yeah. Shamed for not having a child, shamed for not shedding weight after childbirth, shamed for not wanting a child or a man, shamed for having a divorce, shamed for your child's mistake or excesses, shamed for having female children only, shamed for not loving how to cook. You know, it's one thing to know how to cook. It's another thing to love how to cook. And then shame for not even wanting to cook in the first place, really. Shamed for not being outspoken and assertive. Shamed for being career-driven. Shamed for everything mere mortals can conceive. It feels like the fragrance of shame is renewed every morning by humans who are ready to remind you of your inadequacies. These people want to ensure that you never feel good enough. Some actually hold on to your past because it is spiced in shame. And today's agenda is that women need to unlearn shame. Oh, yes. We need to have a good relationship with not being liked or respected. Let me tell you something. There are too many in this world for you to feast or drown you know, on somebody has to like me, somebody has to respect me, you know, for you to say, oh, they're talking about me, you know, um, we need to get to that point where all these things that I mentioned, they really have no effect on our self-esteem. If you are single, you must find how to be single and happy. And it is not, it is not that you are waiting to be married. It is the fact that you are enjoying the stages and the seasons of your life before the next stage. You are not reducing your present to a means of getting to the future. If you are married and you are believing God for a child, you are enjoying that season and making the most of it before the next season. So you are not complaining about this season and reducing this season to nothing just because women need to unlearn shame single women you have to learn how to strip off that goddamn shame sometimes women actually go buy rings they pretend they say stuff just 
for culture and the society to see them in a particular way. Anybody who can respect you without a ring should not be in your life, should not be around you. Anybody who can respect you without a man or whatever should not be in your life, should not be around you. They should respect you because you are human, not because you are fulfilling a cultural or societal role. I know that men are shamed for money, you know, Sometimes men are being reduced to their finances and their economic power. And once something happens to their bank statement and bank account, you hear something like, oh, he's depressed, he's unhappy, this and that. It's so unkind to a human being that you have reduced him to currencies. Yes, it is good for them to be able to take care of themselves and their families and stuff. I agree with that. But I do not agree with you shaming people just because they are in a particular season in their life. There's a serious agenda, you know. When, like, when people wake up, it looks like they are just looking for who to shame. And the whole idea is how to make you feel not good enough. That's the whole agenda. How to make it look like you are not good enough, you are less than, you are not worthy. You can't do that to yourself. This is 2023. You just survived a damn pandemic. So I have brought that gospel that says you need to unlearn shame. You need to resist every feeling of inadequacy and shameful labels. Remove the damn labels off the outfits and the perfumes and the wigs and the um, makeup, whatever that you use. When you're beautiful on the exterior, you must feel beautiful within you. What can people say to you that will affect your self-esteem and make you not feel good enough? You need to learn how to excavate that particular part of you. Let me tell you something. We all fail. I've been here for about 20 years working as a pastor, working as a mental health practitioner, a speaker, everything in the self-help, self-development, psychology space. And I can categorically tell you that all of us have one thing or the other that we are not great at, even though we all make it look like we're cool on social media. We all cry, we all fart, we all weep. We all sometimes suspect ourselves, you know, um, are we all of that and more? We all go through all of that. So I just need you to know that you are as human as I am human. Own your success, own your failures. If you feel that a relationship, right now you're not in a relationship, you are not a failure. You only failed at a relationship. The next time shame servers come in, the next time they come to serve you shame for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the next time they bring shame to you as small chops, you are going to say to them, yes, I failed at, but I am not a failure. Three years ago, I messed up, but guess what? I am not the person who messed up. You have forgiven everybody. When are you going to forgive yourself? Yes, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, mm -mm -mm. you ain't going to stand up right now. Mm -mm. You ain't going nowhere. Mm -mm. Sit, sit, sit. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. When are you going to forgive yourself? Everyone who says something you do not like affects you daily and during the day like somebody says something to you in the morning at night you're still feeling bad are you serious right now sometimes a stranger is commenting on your wall and is messing up your whole day and a whole week a damn stranger you don't even know if the stranger is sane you don't know if they are normal but here you are upset and crying oh they said this to me online they said this to me online i, I i'm tired of the world you ain't tired of anything you know why because you are strong and you are going to dust off everything that is trying to suffocate you today. We all fail. Yes, we all cry. Oh, we weep. Mm, that's the word. We weep and wail. It's not everything I apply for that I get. Do you know how many times I receive the word, oh, we are sorry. We are sorry. Some don't even respond. We are sorry. We wish you all the best. We wish you all the best. They wish us all the best every month. Yeah. I don't get everything I apply for. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
And even though I'm single right now, guess what? I am single and happy. I know people try to say that, oh, single people are not genuinely happy. I know what you're doing. You are the one projecting your unhappiness and sadness on us. But guess what? I caught you right there. You are the one who is unhappy in life. Yeah, you are the one who is sad and you're hoping that you have a department of sadness. You ain't working here. We are single. We are owning our singlehood. We are happy and we're going to own our marriage. We're going to own our relationship. We're going to own our family. But guess what? We are not going to cry and wail and make it look like God ain't faithful because God is faithful. God is good. Anywhere I find myself, I am going to count it all joy. So just in case you think that we are unhappy, we are sad, we are crying somewhere, we think, mm -mm 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 -mm. for me to be single, do you know the options I chose not to subscribe to? Oh yeah, there are many. I could have snatched, I could have stolen, I could have done all those bullshit, but mm -mm, we got dignity here and we have boundaries. So we are single, we are happy, and we're going to be married and we're going to be happily married. Do you understand? So we don't deal with shame here. There's no shame zone where we dwell. So the next time somebody calls you to come feast from the buffet of shame, you know what you're going to say to them? I am not that person that messed up. I have changed. I have grown and I'm on a new level. Do you understand me? See you next week. It's the Naked and Afraid show with the one and only Oyi Consola Alabi, also known as the Emotions Doctor. Remember to subscribe. Yes. Use those prosperous hands of yours. Subscribe and tell a friend and tell a friend and tell everybody that you know. I'll see you next week. I care about you.